We're in hard times and some of us are going to need a lawyer. And if you need a lawyer, don't just react to a TV commercial. Get a copy of the Lawyer's Consumer Directory, which is available absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven store throughout Central Florida. The Lawyer's Consumer Directory is going to give you real hardcore knowledge on how to hire a lawyer and a lot of information on issues like bankruptcy, foreclosure, and more. Get the Lawyer's Consumer Directory. It's absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven throughout Central Florida. Ahora puedes demostrar tu orgullo hispano mientras manejas en la carretera con la nueva tablilla o placa de auto hispana conmemorando los 500 años del descubrimiento de Florida por Juan Ponce de León. Obtén tu tablilla hispana este año y harás la diferencia. Solo mil se necesitan para hacerla permanente. Su donativo ayudará a estudiantes con becas. Nuestra comunidad se beneficiará con más programas y servicios. Resalta nuestra cultura, nuestras raíces. Demostremos que la unión está a la fuerza. Obtén tu tablilla hispana en el departamento de vehículos de motor más cercano o llama hoy al 321-277-0850. ¿Necesitas un abogado? Detente. No contratas un abogado simplemente por haberlo visto en un anuncio comercial. Lawyers Consumer Directory te ofrece la solución para todo tipo de problemas legales, tales como inmigración, bancarrota, divorcios, entre otros. Y hasta te ayuda a cómo contratar un abogado. No te rompa la cabeza buscando la solución cuando la tienes en tus manos. Adquiérelo gratis, sí, absolutamente gratis en cualquier 7-Eleven. Good evening, welcome back to Hispanic TV, Speak Out TV, uh, with Danny Ramos and company. Danny is out tonight. I am your, will be your host, Jose Miranda, along with uh, Daisy Ar Arias, uh, Monica Estreveria. Uh, we got Luis Tito Cotto, and this will be a part of our panel today as we run the gamut on talking everything from UCF to the Florida logo, uh, Bright House, uh, 49 is a channel that we're carried on, 9.30 every Tuesday night. We've been on the air for nine plus years. So without further ado, well, the first topic we're going to talk about is the UCF sugar daddy scandal, or <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that the Sentinel was uh, putting out today. So ladies, I'll open it up to you. There is an allegation out there that uh, students in the school, both male and female, are uh, soliciting in some sort of manner monies to either to go to school to further the education and in the process an exchange of values okay which could be sex books and drugs okay so uh, I open it up to you what's going infinity on out there and beyond. infinity and beyond <laughs> what's going on out it's there? actually one of the top 20 schools okay. that is doing this they actually got a really high demand for the emails and most of the emails came out as UCF students. Right. So what they're doing is to be able to pay their textbooks and their tuition or their rents, they're actually getting sugar daddies through a website which are rich guys that are willing to give and them women, money. And women. And women also, they're sugar mamas for the guys. And um, they're willing What's that number? Let me write it up. It's a website. <laughs> um, and they're willing to pay for their tuition and stuff. So the, now the issue is, is it prostitution or is it not? So some people are saying that it is because they're exchanging some kind of money, but a lot of the money is they're going directly to their tuition in their books. So they have a loophole where it doesn't look like it's prostitution. Now, Sugar Daddies is, is a, um, a name that's been around for a very long time. Mm -hmm, it's actually it's a candy. It, it's sexual it's a candy. candy, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's you pay for candy. services, usually sexual services. Mm -hmm. And I heard you explain the, the, the definition of prostitution. Uh, enlighten me again one more time when okay. you say. The common definition of prostitution is when you do a hand-to-hand -hand exchange of goods or money for sex or sexual favors. Right. In this case, the goods happen to be books, tuition money in exchange for sex or company. Okay. Since they're not doing the exchange hand-to-hand, -hand, it's not considered prostitution, but to the moral issue, it is. Okay. 
is the oldest profession, so, so they basically it, turn it to the 21st century. Okay, so this, is this more of a, a religious concern, a moral concern? Is, is this something that schools should be worried about? No, Or is this something, you said the it's way one I of 20 see schools. It, no, the way I see it is they're, they're saying that it's not illegal or it's not a criminal act. Right. However, how is that any different than, let's say, you going to OBT and picking up a complete stranger, because that's what you're doing mm -hmm. on the website, you picking up a complete stranger, and yeah, they're not actually exchanging your services for cash money, because they're paying your, your rent, your, your tuition, your whatever the case may be. However, that's a complete stranger. And some of them are actually giving them sex. So how is that not illegal or a criminal act? Because when you actually give it sex, it becomes a prostitution issue. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just company. There's a lot of people out there that just want somebody to talk to. They want some companionship. They want somebody they can go out and uh, enjoy it out in town. Doesn't necessarily have to be sex. Mm -hmm. But when it becomes sexual, that's when it becomes a prostitution. Okay, but these girls are stating exactly that they're the first, doing. There was an example, mm -hmm. one that I read. She said the first time they went out to dinner and then they had sex. The second time it was straight to sex. And she made $200 the first time dinner and sex. The second time she said she made $400. So she's upgrading so, her service. Yes. Yeah, but if it's straight, it's more. If it's dinner, you're paying half of the fee, so I'm gonna give you a discount. What does that? Mean? How yeah, is that I not illegal? <laughs> how is that not a criminal act? Or how is how how dare society then you know arrest people that are actually exchanging money for sex when this is actually happening and people are confessing to it? Well, because when you solicit, you tell somebody, I'll give you. X amount of money for you to do well, that's this what sexual doing. act. No. no, because sex the sex part is voluntary and it's a choice. Mm -hmm. The right. person that is receiving the goods doesn't have to agree to sex. Mm -hmm. They can agree to completely different things or other things, company, okay, but, okay, but, but they don't have to agree to sex. But then you tell me this. Bottom line is, you're on this website. People mm -hmm. already know. The mindset is, okay, you, you're seeking someone to do certain things for you. Exactly. Okay. And let's be honest if you have money you're not gonna just look at a pretty face and say oh I just want to look at your pretty face bottom line is they want something in return for the money that they're gonna give but it's not solicited I mean but it's no, not because solicited. supposedly it's the companion person. and mm -hmm. they supposedly have relationships it doesn't extend as a one-night stand mm -hmm. it actually prolongs and this will mm -hmm. be their sugar daddy for a while but they have an option okay, but they he, can choose more than one person, sugar daddy how, okay but how are you special from all the other person that he's assisting in, in their tuitions or in their rent and how how are you special it's, I'm just yeah I, but that's the same thing as dating but it, no, could, no, no, you, no, 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 it's not the same thing. If you, it's the same thing as dating. No, exactly the same thing as dating. No, it's not the same thing. You can date more than one person and go right. and accompany and them to dinner and just say it's dinner. And each one will have something different than the other. And it could have Is a that different True. Okay. And you exchange you a different dinner. Exactly. Aren't you paying for dinner? Aren't you paying for the drinks? Aren't you paying for gas? You are paying. Okay. We, as, I believe that we as a society are hung up in the term of prostitution because we are picturing X amount of money exchanging to a person's hands for a sexual act from what we see in movies, what we mm -hmm. see in the media. Mm -hmm. What's acceptable? Right. What we see in the media. What but is, that's what's not acceptable. acceptable. It is a moral issue. However, it's not a legal issue because the person should have the choice of what services they can but provide. It's compared to dating. It's, it's it, dating. It's just it modernized dating. dating. It's, it's, it's we don't call it sugar daddy, I just call you my mama. <laughs> there you <Okay>. go. <laughs> my honey, my shorty, whichever. Yeah, you know. But, you know? Yeah. but it's the same thing. You he know, has a like, point. Well, somewhat it's related. There, so that's you're probably you a the loophole. Chop of money. Okay. It doesn't then look right okay. because okay. they're well, there you go. <laughs> let's let's it touch a little right. subject here. Then, okay, let's say it's your daughter. And your daughter's going to UCF. Mm. Right. And all of a sudden, she's solicitating sugar daddies to right. pay her tuition. Well, it's very hard for her to do that from a wheelchair. Okay. Well, I'm just After saying, let's, let's, assume, <laughs> let's assume that I she's believe, not in a wheelchair. I believe, I believe, like, I, have, I have a daughter, I have a daughter in okay, college yeah, right I have a daughter in college right example. now. Okay, all right. I have a daughter in college right now, mm -hmm. okay? She is 18 years old. Mm -hmm. By all means, she's an adult old enough to make her own Tasty. choices and decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, her mother and also the Army is paying for her tuition. If mm -hmm. she were in a position in which she couldn't pay, for tuition, she needs to make a choice, either tell us mm -hmm. or find a way to pay it. Right. If she chooses a way to but pay it that we don't that agree with. And exactly. that's what this, this is all exactly. about. Exactly. If mm -hmm. it was my daughter doing this thing, I'm like, first of all, you need to exhaust every mm -hmm. available 
course mm -hmm. and every available means to get your tuition paid. If this is what you got to resort to get your tuition paid, that is your personal decision. I don't support it. Okay. I don't want anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. I would rather work three jobs mm -hmm. and not sleep than my daughter do that. But at the end, she's 18 years old. She is an adult. It is her choice and her constitutional right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, no, so bottom, bottom line, yeah. what I'm hearing from everyone is that it's okay. No. 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 It's it's too, okay. I say it's to their discretion because right. we cannot dictate what they do and how mm -hmm. they get their money. We don't know what sacrifices they're going to. Now it's prostitu prostitution legal, but it's not fair. Exactly what you say, I understand. It's not fair for those to be able to get away with it and these others not to. And I understand that point of view. You're, you're being a hypocrite. You're, you're, you're promoting this are, are service. Are you concerned about the emotional values? No, 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 no. Forget the emotions. Emotions don't fit into this role. Okay. There's no emotions. <laughs> There's okay. no emotions. I mean, one know. of the girls described the situation as, I couldn't think of it. I just didn't put too much thought into it. Mm -hmm. She just went along and did it because she saw that was the only way she can get means we've for that had, situation. We've also had girls that have gone to college that have become lawyers and, 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 and beyond mm -hmm. that have become strip teasers in order to pay tuitions and stuff like that. They've done whatever they needed to do in order to meet, to achieve their mm -hmm. goals. So isn't this a similar fashion, people trying to reach their goals. Yeah. And they, this has been going on for a long time. This has been going on since the beginning of time. Right. Sexual favors in return for the common good. This has been going right. on since the beginning of time. Right. It's just that right now, since the economy is on the rebound and everything is going on right now, it's become more common. But when I was going to school in 1989, University of Florida, guess what? A lot of sorority girls went to school to find a husband or a way to pay to college. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, last year, one of my friends, he became a freshman at the University of South Carolina. He was in the Army for a while. He was looking for somebody rich, for what? So maybe he can get a break in his school. It's been done for ages. Right. Now it's more common because of the economy, but it's always been going on. This is not a new issue. It's just more popular, and that's what makes it more explosive. But it's been going on since the beginning of and now continuing education. And now they have access education. to the web. Right. The web so it's, it's gives them the opportunity. Before they had to look for it, now there's the means through the web what where it think, makes it much easier. What do you think UCF mm -hmm. should do in this process? UCF, I believe, is not going to get involved they don't, in this process yeah, they because they're, this getting is, they're getting their money at the end. They're yeah. getting their money. Mm -hmm. They're not quitting school because they're missing mm -hmm. their tuition. They're mm -hmm. getting their money. Mm -hmm. So at the end, UCF is coming out winning. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so we know now that if, uh, if you were contacted by a sugar daddy, that somebody thinks you have money. Okay, so. I guess we could assume <laughs> Sugar mamas or sugar daddies. Uh, sugar daddies. All right. Um, the other thing that's been happening this week that I read across, and I, I'd like your input, mm -hmm. um, we've had the immigration issue, which is... Uh, up front and something that's been in the politics for at least forever and uh, of course this way of, uh, of, of getting their citizenship and stuff like that you know people that I think to the tune of about 10 million mm -hmm. it's a big it's uh, 10 a big million, number. No, 10 11 mm -hmm. million people in this country uh, illegally or legally mm -hmm. that that need the, the papers and stuff so you had um, a, a group of people, including um, uh, Marco Rubio, the Republican, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who's already vying for the next presidency, mm -hmm. okay, and um, some of the Democrats indicating they wanted to come together and create this package of inclusivity, mm -hmm. you know, for, for the Hispanic community uh, and those who uh, needed to get passports and green cards and things like that. And, the, and their pathway to citizenship. However, the loophole in this is it's based on border security. Mm -hmm. So my question to you, mm -hmm. given the fact that some of the border states, specifically I'm, I'm speaking also about Arizona and Janet Brewer, who uh, is, is no friend to the Hispanic community. Mm -hmm. At all. At all, okay. Um, their say-so would have to be a, a, a positive thing to go forward in trying to enact any of, the, any of these things, including the DREAM Act. So how do you feel about the border issue being tied up t to the immigration issue? Well, I believe that it's a hypocritical issue because unless you're a Native American, in 1492, everybody here is an immigrant. Right. This nation was built based on immigrants. Even Ellis Island, Statue of Liberty, bring me your sick and your wounded. Mm -hmm. Let's build a nation 
all of you, come one, come all, bring me your sick, bring me your poor, bring me your wounded, let's build a nation. Now that everybody's got that they want, they look at the economy, they want to say, hold the hold up, time out. Not everybody can come in. It's a hypocritical issue. It's a hypocritical issue. This country was based, was built, founded. was founded, founded. on mm -hmm. immigration. Right. Now they want to keep people out. And let's think about it. Who's doing the majority of the hard labor in, in this country right now? The immigrants. Immigrants, right. mm -hmm. because too many people are concerned of making what they need to survive, and they will do it for pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. Let's right. look at all the maids in Beverly Hills. Let's look at everybody with money. Look at their nannies and everything. But as far as the immigration goes and border patrol, it's a matter of it's it's a matter of is it hurting the country? Is it hurting the demographics of the country? Is it hurting us financially? No, the crime rate is up. Everything is up in Arizona and they're blaming the immigrants and also giving them the right to profile you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So they're going about this the whole wrong. It's a hypocritical But choice. immigrants right now, if they're applying for a green card, if they do a crime, automatically they get deported. So mm -hmm. they cannot commit these crimes. So actually, the immigrants are not the ones committing the crimes that you're seeing. Well, this administration, yeah. of, of all the administrations thus far, I mean, going back 10, 20 years, mm -hmm. has um, deported more immigrants uh, than any other administration, past administration. So when people say the president is soft on immigration, it's, that's farthest from the truth. What he's trying to do is, uh, it looks like he's trying to be even-handed, but it's not even-handed enough. No, exactly. uh, okay, um, you know that they want um, Latinos to pay a fine, for example, learn English, for example, and then go to the back of the line in order to get jobs because there's a segment of the population that believes that Hispanics there's still a segregation that takes, from, takes away from, from the people that are US citizens labor. and the people that are immigration. Right. And this segregation, um, the reason why it still exists is like you're saying, you know, politics holds back whatever they know will assist, for instance, let's say the Democrats. If you allow the majority of the immigrants that are here now to become citizens, who do you think the next president is going to be? It's going to be a Hispanic person. It's going to be a minority. A minority. You know, you have to understand, you have people holding other people back on purpose. I believe that people that have been here, let's say, you know, that have been here five years or more that don't have papers, they should be able, I mean, unless they commit crimes. People that have a, you know, a rap sheet from here to Spain, they should be deported right off the bat. But people that have been here working, making a living, you know, like you said, doing the jobs that other people don't want to do, they should automatically be your citizen. You're saying grandfather them in. Yeah, grandfather yes. them in. Well, the last person that did that was uh, Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. And he didn't fare too well with that. Okay, mm -hmm. so we're, we're talking about even more people mm -hmm. now to grandfather in. How much, in your opinions, how much is enough immigration? There Should we have a limit? No. Should we close our borders no. to the United States and say enough? I think, I think it should be on a case-by-case -case basis. I think it should be a way of, you're here, do what you gotta do, act right. Pay taxes. Pay your taxes, <laughs> do what you gotta do, you will reap Pay your taxes. reward. Mm. Do what you gotta do, right. do it right, you get to stay. Don't do what you gotta do, you do it wrong, you go. Mm -hmm. So in your opinion, in, in the opinion of this panel, mm -hmm. we should continue to open our borders to everyone? No, no, that's not what we're saying. First of so all, the ones that are here, correct. grant them there. Okay, if you've been here five years But also, more. you know, there's other issues. Everybody's with the immigra immigration. Right. And my cousin, for example, posted something on Facebook. She said, we have our own issues where there's people with, that don't have food, that are disabled, that are minorities. Right. And we're not taking care of that, but we're willing to let other people come in. But I have and, a problem with that. Because if you're a United States citizen, you have the advantage over these people. If you're in oh. circumstances... When you say these people... Well, the people she's immigrants. referring to. Okay. No, uh, not the immigrants. Or the, the people that... Hispanics, mostly? No, the people that are U.S. citizens that need help from the government and right. are in bad situations. And, of course, case by case. You know, you can't judge a exactly. whole group. You know, but... They have but those are issues people have though. about the immigration well, law. Not mine, know, but they have issues like that. They say, why don't we take care of our problems first before letting other because people come in? Our but those people are created by our own, own selves. Yes. And know? these people want to come mm -hmm. in, but like she, he says, they do the jobs that other people are not willing to do. 
Well, yeah, then that's and there's a lot of people that can actually go work and, and, and they don't want then to. they don't want to. to there's a lot of um, how is it homeless people that rather not work and be homeless. Well, that's another issue. But just for the for the but, record, there are a lot of homeless people that are out there through no no reason of their own and it's in circumstances. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and we have a lot of veterans are that are out there those in those woods. Because of, choose, yes, because okay. of the so. issues to that work, affected them. They choose for the government to help them. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. It's a case by case basis. These some of these immigrants they Daisy actually is come a closet here. Republican, by the way. So no, just I'm not a closet you know. Republican. <laughs> I just you know I see a lot of things. Right. You know they work and, really and hard. They I've work worked really all hard. my life. I started working since the age of 14. Okay. I've never, ever right. have received public assistance. I've never, ever had the government actually help me to do anything. Okay, are okay. you saying people in public, and we're going off topic no, no, a little no, no, bit, no. but are you what saying I'm people saying in public assistance are there because they want to? are capable of taking care of to? yourself if you choose are to. Are you saying people in public assistance are there because they want to be? No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. What I'm saying is what she indicated earlier, that people are commenting, oh, let's take care of our, our own issue. people right. here. Yes, to a certain point. But in order for us to help you, you have to help yourself. Okay. You know, that's the whole mindset. Plus, a it's, lot of it's people, by yeah, taxpayers. So give, if we make give, the immigrants and it's not, taxpayers and citizens, it. then they'll be able to help those so, that the, have the, government this, assistance. The fact is, it's a chain exactly. reaction. Exactly. The fact the is, reaction. most immigrants, exactly immigrants pay by cash. Right. So, but you so get then instant if you make money. them U.S. citizens, then they're paying taxes They pay anyway. Exactly. They pay anyway. That's that's the, that's the, that's the the wrong thing that people have in their heads. That somehow the immigrants come here and they just get everything for free. They don't. They pay through the teeth. In fact, they pay more yes. because they want to stay out of the limelight. So they pay mm -hmm. cash money. That's cash money. Somebody doesn't have to report because I'm giving you cash, mm -hmm. right? Which quiet. creates another situation altogether, mm -hmm. all right? So I mean, so the process. There's here, other people that are benefiting from it. There's people yeah. that are benefiting. Okay, so again, so getting back to 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 the, the core issue is, mm -hmm. if they align the border with allowing immigration to happen, mm -hmm. okay, or the Dream Act, which is the the children of those immigrants, mm -hmm. okay, should should we hold back immigration? Should no. we hold that back? No, we have no right to We're hold all back. immigrants. Yeah. No, Some way, somehow, we'll, we came we'll from We'll hold it back else. until the borders are secure. No, I don't know. There's no security it's guaranteed in the borders. Exactly. Is there? Have, can you, you tell me there's border guarantee, there's security guarantee mm -hmm. in these borders that no, the crime rate is going to go down, that mm -hmm. things are going to get better? Right. There's no guarantee in life. But people, we're also looking at we're also looking at one side of the immigration. I can look at both sides of the immigration. We're talking about the people that don't have the means mm -hmm. to get here a certain way. How about the people that do have the means from Europe, Central America, South America, right. Africa, Asia, very, very affluent people mm -hmm. right. who will pay their Edu way in. Some That's also an immigration issue. Some exactly. of them have a lot of money. Exactly. Mm -hmm. do we want so by, by closing them doors, again, you're closing out a lot of opportunities and opportunities. Exactly. Right. And you know, you, you cannot be, like you say, you cannot be a hypocrite. We are all immigrants somehow some way we all came from another land okay um you know i don't want to stereotype but there was a little um a little cartoon where a white guy is telling a black man go back home to africa and then the little white guy is telling the hispanic go back to one of the islands and then all of a sudden there's an indian and then the white guy the little white cartoon says oh i'm sorry you belong here so you know what i mean the, the whole purpose is we are all we are all from, from somewhere, different places. Yeah. We, we were born in this specific land. Our generations migrated to this land. Okay. So our blood, so for us to say let's close the doors to other people is... Well, let me, let me throw out one last question on this topic before oh. we move on. Um, should we then look for the highly educated among the immigrants that come in? For those that are, uh, you know, doctors, lawyers, and Indian chiefs, no, we allow them first to come in? I think that we should look at every case on a case-by-case -case basis and basically ask the old question, what can you do for, for us? us? We know what we can do for you. Right. We know what you want. You're coming over here. You want a better life for yourself. You want a better life for your children, right. a better future, because this is the land of the golden rule. He who has the goal, make the rules. What can you do for us? Are you going to be on the streets collecting the government cheese? Or are you going to be busting your back, paying your taxes, earning 
the right to become a U.S. citizen. Okay. That should be the number one question in immigration. What can you do for this country? You want to do anything? You can't do anything? Join the military. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people. I was in the military for 16 years. There was a lot of people, a lot of people. We even have a segment that we can teach English to people that didn't know English, that that's the best way to get your citizenship. If you are an adult between 18 and 35 and you want your citizenship, enlist in the service. Prove to us that you belong here. A U.S. citizen. And become a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. Because it's easy to say it from the word out, but doing it, that's what matters. Who is more likely to stick by their word and who's most likely to take advantage of the system? Okay. That's what immigration should come down to. Mm -hmm. On that note, Governor Scott. Oh. Okay. <laughs> on that, on that. Uh, Governor. Uh, all right. But, oh, hey, hey, hey. Governor, He's the man in Florida right now. So. <laughs> Governor Scott has introduced a new logo that I hear has women a little bit concerned. Uh, about, not only women. Uh, a little bit concerned about <laughs> where his direction. Sexist. So tell us, tell us about it. It's um, the Florida is the perfect climate. The slogan is perfect climate for business. Right. And when they did the Florida logo, mm -hmm. they put the I is actually a tie. Okay. So people say it's sexist. Okay. The comment is, oh, because it means that it's only for men, business for men. And then some are just saying that, no, there were women today on the radio saying, no, it's not. I can wear a tie and I'm a woman and I, could, I can make a tie. So I have no problem with a tie. Mm -hmm. But there's some people that feel that it didn't address the other um, sexes in, the, in Florida, Which, like the gay like, and okay. the women. How would, what kind of logo would you put for all that? I don't know. <laughs> a, a rainbow. A bird with a twist. I think, uh, uh, a what? braid. <laughs> I, think, I think that the issue is being made more than what it is because it when, is. You see, when you see somebody in a suit and tie, mm -hmm. automatically you think what? Business. 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 Yes. So that's exactly, that's exactly the picture that they're trying to portray without trying to insult anybody. Mm -hmm. You see somebody in a suit and tie, business. They're doing something that they need to be dressed like that. So mm -hmm. that's the image that he wanted to portray, but I didn't think that he thought it through mm -hmm. or even thought that everybody would take it to the level to that it's right now. To the level to call it sexist. Exactly. 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 So it wasn't, it wasn't. It was no intention to, to intention, be sexist. It's just to portray a business-like mm -hmm. atmosphere. Well, we've got about 30 seconds left, so one, one, one quick shot at that. I, I'm okay with the tie. Okay. I totally agree. I see a tie. It's business, and we need all the business yes. that we can, in our, especially here in Orlando, Florida. And to bring so up the I'm jobs. Okay right. That's the only way we're going to do it, okay. bringing other businesses in. Well, Look at us. We're talking business, and guess what? We were you're wearing ties. ties. We forgot sorry. ours. Oh, <laughs> you're going to stay. But you're still part of the business. <laughs> I will be interested to see the picture of the logo with a twisted bird. <laughs> Just to see, see how the that is. wearing a tie. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've... We've come to the uh, end of our segment. We want mm -hmm. to uh, thank um, Monica and uh, uh, Daisy and uh, Luis for joining us today mm -hmm. in this uh, really raucous uh, <laughs> uh, conversation that we've had. We look forward to you joining us again next week on Hispanic TV. I'm Jose Miranda, and thank you very much for coming. hard times and some of us are going to need a lawyer. And if you need a lawyer, don't just react to a TV commercial. Get a copy of the Lawyer's Consumer Directory, which is available absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven store throughout Central Florida. The Lawyer's Consumer Directory is going to give you real hardcore knowledge on how to hire a lawyer and a lot of information on issues like bankruptcy, foreclosure, and more. Get the Lawyer's Consumer Directory. It's absolutely free of charge at any 7-Eleven throughout Central Florida. Ahora puedes demostrar tu orgullo hispano mientras manejas en la carretera con la nueva tablilla o placa de auto hispana conmemorando los 500 años del descubrimiento de Florida por Juan Ponce de León. Obtén tu tablilla hispana este año y harás la diferencia. Solo mil se necesitan para hacerla permanente. Su donativo ayudará a estudiantes con becas. Nuestra comunidad se beneficiará con más programas y servicios. Resalta nuestra cultura, nuestras raíces. Demostremos que la unión está a la fuerza. Obtén tu tablilla hispana en el departamento de vehículos de motor más cercano o llama hoy al 321-277-0850.